Great. Well, thank you all for joining us uh, for this session. This session is going to be about how therapy layering and touchless treatments can both enhance the guest experience and increase your return on investment. We have some wonderful ladies with us today from the spa and wellness industry. I'm sure a lot of you already know who they are, but for those who don't, um, would you mind please sharing a little summary about yourself and what you do? If we can start with you, Paula. Yes, of course. Hi, I'm Paula Perkins. I run my own consultancy. Um, have been in the industry at probably the same amount of time as these lovely ladies on the call, so over 30 years. Um, and I create concepts for luxury hotels and resorts from a spa and wellness perspective, um, from design all the way through to pre-opening and then ongoing into management support. Um, so it's a pleasure to be here, Erin, and thank you very much. Brilliant. Thank you, Paula. Um, Danny? Good afternoon. My name is Daniela Russell and I'm based in Dubai. I have my own company, Spa Consulting. I have moved more into wellness over the last few years, uh, having done a lot of spas in the industry for the Middle East in particular. And very similar to Paula from concept and design all the way through construction out the other end to management, uh, including all the setup and everything that goes with it. Moved much more into the wellness sphere. Um, we've seen the shift in the Middle East a little bit more. Um, we've moved sort of slightly from spa to salon, which does everything and wellness. So leaving a little bit of spa in the middle, but uh, a slight change of thought processes. Brilliant, thank you. And Tammy in sunny Miami. Um, thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. And I'm clearly with surrounded by talent this morning. So I'm happy to be a part of it. And, you know, a little bit about me, similar to the other two ladies, 30 years in the business. Um, I built 13 spas from the ground up all over the country, from California to Pennsylvania to Miami. Um, and very similar to both ladies, moved into wellness about 10 years ago, adding integrative medicine, adding um, more wellness outside of massage, facial and body treatments, uh, Chinese medicine, uh, sex therapists. We've really evolved in wellness, I would say. So it's been a fun journey. And here at the Carolina Miami Wellness Resort, I've been able to add so many wonderful wellness things under one roof. And again, integrative medicine, Chinese medicine, but also, uh, we launched in 2022 the touchless wellness experiences. So happy to be here and um, I hope I can shed some light on some touchless and, and how amazing it's been to uh, the US opening back up to, you know, after the, not that we're out of the pandemic, but opening back up the spa and giving people options for wellness outside of massage, body treatments and facials. So happy to be here. Thank you. That's brilliant. Um, so really why we've got these uh, wonderful ladies with such vast experience um, was really to get into a discussion around combining different therapies, including halotherapy, of course, and treatments to both enhance both the guest experience and also increase revenue. Um, over the past few years, we've seen huge advances in technology and the different options out there. Um, I guess a really good place to start would be what top trends or products have you seen starting to emerge or which ones do you feel are worth the investment? Uh, who would like to start on that one? Paula? Yeah, sure. Um, I mean, there's, there's so many different ways that we can take this conversation. I think one of the biggest areas that I see the development is, is the use of light and also the use of salt therapy. Um, so if we talk about light in particular, particular red light, so your photobiomobulation, um, um, it can be used in so many different ways, whether in capsule format, whether within a sauna format, um, it, it's very, very varied and very flexible. And the impact that that has on the guests from an inflammation perspective, is quite astounding, the scientific research that's coming back of how it can really help to reduce inflammation 
And we all know that inflammation is one of the key factors that we need to be focusing on to maintain and for prevention um, for the future. So I see lots of different use of, of light, whether that's integrated into a facial as well. So there's lots of wonderful ways that we can integrate it at the end of the facial treatment. Um, there's lots of different ways. Brilliant. Yeah, no, I, I think you're spot on there with the, the red light um, and also the light to the facials. I think uh, one of our sponsors, Gary Aney, also yeah. have the, um, the new eye dome bed. Um, I actually was lucky enough to try that one out the other day. Um, it is quite incredible. Uh, I really enjoyed it. And also the red light therapy as well. Tammy, I think you've got some of these um, at your premises there. Yeah, actually, um, of course, Sammy Greeny, um, we have a few touch lists with him, Spa Wave, which takes you to a beta sleep in nine minutes. We have um, also the quartz with the Himalayan salt mixed together. Um, another partner of ours is Lemmy. We also have, um, you know, a quartz table with them. Um, but we also, like, when we talk about touchless wellness experiences that we launched in July of 2020, I will tell you that when we first started, we had 12 different experiences. My top experiences right now are, we were talking about red light, prism, light pod, uh, halo, the uh, halo therapy is very popular because here, I don't know exactly what was happening in other parts, but in Miami, we were not, we have a thermal experience that has seven different heat experiences and then a cold one that was closed. When I opened back up, that was not because any communal space was not available by the CDC. So Halo, um, the Halo therapy became a very, um, very desired treatment and people you know were buying series of it so not just a la carte i do have 800 residents that live here i do 50 percent of my revenue comes from the local community so those people were looking desperately for health wellness and building a strong immunity system so halo prism and vemi and somadone are the four top treatments right now i have like I said, 12 in total, but those all improve health and wellness for people. And uh, believe it or not, the 50 and over here at, in Miami were a more reluctant to go back to massage facial and body treatments. So it almost sort of funneled this group that probably wouldn't have tried touchless at all but because they were a little, had a lot of anxiety about going back in a room with someone, they started, you know, the launch of the touchless wellness experiences was uh, phenomenal. It, it's now 15 from month to month, it'll range from 15 to 20% of my revenue and no labor. So it's, I, I don't think, and I want to make that clear, I don't think that massage or body treatments or facial touch is healing. We all know that. But to be honest, the 20, 30, and 40-year-old, they were back in the doors getting the massages and facials. It was really the people with most of the time and the disposable income that were having that anxiety about returning. So even fast forward now, we're now seeing that because we had such a great launch, that people are coupling like the salt float bath with the massage or Vemi with a massage or the prism light pod with a facial. So now we're seeing before people, you know, the anxiety level for the 50 and over isn't quite as high as it once was, but we see people not moving away from it, but now coupling it with other treatments. They've obviously seen the results, Tammy, and can see how it is helping yeah. with prevention. So, I mean, that's superb and long may that continue. Exactly. Um, how about in Dubai or in the Middle East, Danny? Are you kind of finding similar things there? Well, salt, actually, halo therapy has been quite popular and growing quite con consistently over quite a period, quietly but surely, mainly due to 
we have a lot of allergies here. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's probably compounded with a lot of air conditioning, hot summers, hotter summers, a lot of sand, dust, etc. And the salt rooms, um, or handheld salt inhalations or treatments. I do a lot of salt, uh, hot rock, hot salt uh, massage. Yeah. I've switched over from the stones to salt stones. Um, we use salt soap. Right. You yes. take it as salt um, as, a, as a wash mm -hmm. because it's very antiseptic, it's very clean, it's, mm. it's fabulous on the skin. Um, so we use a lot of salt in a variety of ways and the halo therapy has grown tremendously coupled with the infrared. Uh, we find that is really very, very uh, good solid mix. We're putting one in at the moment for a, a halo helotherapy with IV drips as well so while breathing in doing therapy we've got the IV alongside it um, so for us that's a tremendous growth red light absolutely agree with Paula and Tammy on this it's, it's quite outstanding and the MXL dome is going into our next project we're also just creating um, a well-being for senior living and very much agree with Tammy, the, the older group who have got a bit more disposable income are actually very keen to try other touchless treatments, which will incorporate some form of health benefits before they went straight back into massage. And as, as Tammy says, they're coupling up now, they're adding and making that their prelude before their treatments. So they feel that they've got a, an, an additional benefit in a variety of ways. So the combination um, therapies really seem to be taking off because I think um, personally, I think people are, are more kind of cash, cash rich and time poor. So if they can get more benefit from less time, um, you know, it's kind of a win-win, isn't it? And 100%. It will also what, a great, what a great um, idea, Danny, of actually including IV with your halo so you're inhaling while you're having the iv drip that yes. is just a fantastic combination it's really yeah. really great i felt that that way we could even just have a screen up with the breathing techniques Lovely. again it's enhancing the iv there's a variety of different benefits that go with it yeah the other thing we're finding very popular at the moment is cold plunge cryo yeah um i've always found that to be quite a shock here and it literally is a shock um because of course we're we're oversensitive because of the heat mm. we don't cold plunges never really worked in spas here yeah. but all of a sudden the cryo units and the the Wim Hof ice baths have become a phenomenon but I think that's possibly a trend uh and a, and I don't know how long it will last yeah, I think I think that's really interesting, Danny, because it's actually one of mine that I would say is a trend as well. But I think again, I, I think Wind Hop has really helped that trajectory um, because of yeah. its impact on inflammation. Again, it's all about yes. bringing it back to how can we reduce inflammation and cold, as we know, taking the body down to 110 degrees have such a massive impact. So I'm seeing cryotherapy units going into a lot of facilities now. My only yep. caveat is they really need to ensure it's right for their market because it can be sometimes a difficult sell and it's a huge investment. So it's really ensuring that you have got the right target market that's going to use it because, of course, it's only used for three minutes. So if you haven't got the footwear, yes. it's a very expensive investment. So it, like everything, isn't it, with all of these um, facilities and modalities, you've got to ensure it's, it's really meeting your target market and you're really marketing it very well and putting it into packages. But I think cold... I have noticed really that, Paula, to be honest. Yeah. yeah, I have noticed it. There's a couple of clinics here that are, are struggling with keeping a consistent flow of clients going in. Yeah. And that's where it does become a difficult... ROI to be honest. So yeah, just um, to circle back on something that um, Tammy touched on, um, the size of the rooms, are you finding any trends in, or um, clients 
leaning one way or the other towards maybe smaller um, intimate rooms versus these bigger larger rooms which they have to share with other people obviously Tammy's kind of intimated that they're going for the smaller units how about in, um, in the UK and the Middle East uh, for me it depends on the client mm -hmm. the the level of the client will almost dictate the size of the room right so I can't get away from that here mm -hmm. um, but if I was on, on the main when working and designing new spa or wellness facilities, I keep the room to a sensible standard, but a lot more of an intimate feel to it. Absolutely. I think, I think for me, it's um, a lot of clients are wanting more personalization. So they're wanting private space. So I'm really seeing an uplift in VIP suites when you can actually rent the space by time and including different facilities in there with the layering opportunities. So I see that's definitely appealing. Um, although when we talk about private space, I noticed, um, and I can't remember the name, an amazing facility is just opened in Finland and it's the largest sauna ever. <laughs> and they have the whole um, fantastic ceremonies that are going on. I think I think it houses almost a hundred people in this incredible sauna. Um, the Oscos rituals are, are such a big part of their culture. Um, mm. So it's it's really interesting to see. I think so many people have missed that interaction with others. But personally, for the spas that I'm creating, I'm trying to do things on a much more private, personal mm. perspective. And talking about all the different therapies, is there um, a, a specific order that um, can really enhance the guest journey? How, do, how can people think about which order to put things in? Because uh, I mean, Tammy, you've got a lot of um, options there. Is there, do you recommend to them that they do them in a certain order um, to get the best out of their experience? Or do you offer a package like a sleep journey package? Actually, exactly what you're saying. Um, when we first launched, a lot of people were doing one or two services that they felt was healing and um, healing to their own personal lives. But now what we see um, with the anxiety levels that we have, so people are looking for stress relief, sleep well, and they're looking for muscle recovery and weight loss. Those are the four things. So what we did is we took all our 12 different experiences and then created wellness circuits. Um, and back to Paula's point, um, again, being in a larger space makes people feel much more comfortable when they're not sharing that space. So the great thing for us is all our experiences are in different rooms, um, but the rooms are large, they're spacious, so for us, you're going from one room to another. So our circuits could take anywhere from, I think the shortest is one and a half hours to two and a half hours. So now people have not really come in contact. I do agree with Paula that I do think people miss that interaction. I know in our relaxation lounge, people enjoy chatting with each other and interacting. Today, I don't really see that much of that going on. People are more conscious of being in their own space, yeah. but the opportunity to be able to spend an hour and a half and have a wellness experience, whether it's you know sleep, which is a huge issue right now. Sleep is a big um, issue that we hear. In fact, we're building retreats on these topics because people actually are calling us saying, uh, you used to do retreats in 2019, are you going back to those retreats? I'm having anxiety. I need to go to like a workshop or retreat to help me deal and cope with what I'm dealing and coping with. Like people are looking to spas as a solution and a funny story back in 1993, um, I was involved, I still am, International Spa Association, they paid um, uh, a company to come in and predict the future. So think about that, 1993, International Spa Association pays Pricewater Cooper money to predict our future. And what they said was that the spas would be the hospital of the future. So here we are in 1993 and back now, 
2021 turning into 2022 and what's happening. Spas are adding, you know, touchless wellness, but they're adding integrative medicine. They're adding a sex therapist. They're adding programming and retreats that are dealing, that are helping people deal and cope instead of popping a pill. Yeah. And that's wonderful. You know, to so say it's changing. Couldn't mm. agree more. Yeah, and the yeah. preventative side of things as well rather than waiting until someone's ill and then fixing them it's more about prevention um and if we can mm -hmm. all adopt you know some of these practices we'd be a whole lot healthier wouldn't we and Absolutely. hopefully wouldn't get ill um but I, I think what's really important as, as tammy said I, I think it's so critical that we educate the guests of how to use these facilities. We've, been, we've all installed amazing heat experiences over the years. Um, you know, you go to any sort of amazing spa and there'll always be beautiful saunas and steams and vitality pools. That's an expectation now. But what I think so many spas forget to do is actually guide their guests on the correct journey of using these facilities and how important it is for that hot and cold experience to really maximize the benefits of these facilities. And I mm. think with the touchless therapies, that's blaring even more the importance of education. Mm. Um, and I think we just really need to guide our guests even more carefully so that they, they benefit even more because that, all that's going to do is create more loyalty to the individual um, business. Absolutely. And also mm. ensuring that the staff are educated about yeah. how to guide, yeah. Yeah. guide yes. through the journey. And actually, um, we're going to be having another talk with Catherine Moore on the whole um, recruitment and education side of things as well. So do tune into that um, if you want to learn a bit more about that. Um, but yeah, it, there's nothing worse than turning up somewhere and someone just sending you off on your way. What you really want to be able to, to do is to be guided and advised on how to get the most out of your time. You're spending all that money, you're giving your time, you want to get the most back from it. So that's a really good point. Thank you. I think we probably need to come back a bit more to cons consultancy, con consultations mm. and getting, I think we sort of shoved them to the side and check that no one had COVID coming in and check that they didn't have any contraindications and almost parked it. Whereas we need to go back to inquire to the client what they're looking for. And that's where the educational aspect can come in on a natural flow. But a lot of our team members have often sort of rushed into a treatment and not thought about perhaps pre preloading the treatment with a, a good way of breaking the anxiety down mm -hmm. and then by the time they get to their facial or their massage they're actually a good way into the relaxation stage through having gone through the halo therapy or the infrared or whatever it may be that was a precursor to their treatment couldn't agree more it is about that journey isn't it it's really Absolutely. it's not just reception and treatment it's that whole journey and that's mm -hmm. the beauty of what the spa and well-being um, facility can offer um, mm. yeah, and I agree, it's all about that consultation and making it much more personalised, taking the yep. time for that consultation to really listen to what the guest is saying. And I think that will come down with probably what Catherine will be talking about. Mm. It's about um, upskilling our teams so that they, they really do guide the guest in a much more personalised way. Mm. Yep. So talk, talking about our guests, I mean, we've touched a little bit on the age of them. How about um, the, the difference between the male and the female guests coming through? Have you seen any um, changes over the past couple of years? Um, are, are we seeing more men coming into the spas? Because personally, you know, there weren't as many, but I'm seeing just through, um, you know, halo therapy that I'm actually getting quite a lot of people coming in um, that maybe wouldn't have tried it before, but because they're seeing the, the additional health benefits, we're kind of getting newcomers into the market. I believe what you just said is absolutely correct. Men are interested in health and wellness more than ever. And, and I think people are focused, like it isn't really about touchless, right? but it's about treatments that are gonna give me health and wellness. And, and when we focus on sleep and we focus on uh, respiratory and we focus on, I don't sleep well and I, I don't feel good. And I'm, I'm, you know, a lot of times stress causes pain. 
So I find even with men, they're, they're much more open and they're, they're questioning more things than they ever did. And I just want to touch on something Daniela said. I think our roots, where we started in the spy industry, we were more involved with consulting with the guests. Mm. Then we moved away from that. Yeah. And I think mm. we're back where we started at years ago. I, I completely agree. Completely agree. Steady circle of life, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Um, can I just mention, yeah. I've been working on the biohacking all, which was mm. launched two weeks ago. And we launched it, yay, thank you. Um, we launched it at Jitex, which is a big digital show here in Dubai, because it was actually the company, uh, Etislat, which is our telephone provider, that requested it to go on to their digital health platform. Um, and when you say about men, it was the men, we had both male and female, but the men were absolutely fascinated by it. And it part of it, I think, was because, as Tammy said, there's an element there of, um, it's, it's, a, it's not too complex. You, you get in, you relax, you put the headphones on and away you go. It doesn't feel so, it, it, it works hand in hand with a man somehow. They feel quite at ease. The digital side, it's a bit techy. It's a I little think, bit gimmicky. Techy, absolutely. Yeah. So yeah. they didn't feel that they were having to strip the clothes off. There was mm. no vulnerability. There was um, not something just that their wife does or their girlfriend. So they didn't feel it was too feminine. Yeah. But it's a great lead-in for men to take the next step forward. And I totally agree men are so much more conscious about their health and their well-being now and they have been struggling they they've women rising over time in in their position has slightly threatened them and put them slightly off skew and they need to feel more in tune with themselves because up until then they've been very practical driven so i'm seeing a positiveness i'm seeing a lot more men approaching yoga meditation mm -hmm. very much in the sultrance in the halo therapy yeah, anything think, a bit techy yeah the barrier seems to be coming down a bit and i think also um the use of other wording um other than just spa um you know the inclusion of mm. wellness and health um and also that the gyms now starting to adopt more of these um, options as well. You don't just tend to see um, a sauna or a steam room at the at the gyms now. You're seeing things yeah. like hydro massage beds and and the infra cabins, uh, other options that you know uh, predominantly um, you often see males in the gym. So I think introducing that into um, the gyms has started to highlight the benefit for them and then almost crossing it across into what we would consider the spa area and creating these um, new wellness clinics and health clinics that kind of almost sit in the middle. Um, I think there's one in Dubai, Danny, um, you cryo that they've got all the um, yes. modern technologies there. And I do know that a lot of their um, clients are male because um, they Absolutely. can get benefits from a, a sports perspective, a health perspective. Um, so, mm, exactly. Mm. And we're also seeing that with the halo therapy um, especially with long COVID, it doesn't discriminate. Everybody, um, you know, can suffer from long COVID. Uh, also with the sports side of things, people trying to enhance their performance. We're seeing um, a lot of athletes, high-end athletes looking to, to these kind of options to help improve their, their performance. So, you know, and, and again, with stress and anxiety, they don't discriminate either. So I think you know, it's, it's definitely opening it all up. And it's really great to see that the, the men are coming to see our, um, and use the facilities. So providing for them is now almost our job, isn't it? And creating those spaces. So We're also seeing a lot of salt rooms in, in the studios. Mm. So they've put salt inside yeah. the yoga or yes. the, the stretch studio so that the breathing classes are just widening up the whole of the lungs and the capacity the respiratory mm -hmm. and there's a much better and more relaxed feel afterwards 
Mm. Yeah, so, and it just comes back to that combination again, isn't it? You know, doubling up and being able to charge more for doubling these things up. And I think there's also a lot of options for uh, halo therapy rooms to include things like singing bowls and meditation and breathing techniques. Other things that maybe don't necessarily fall into um, a treatment on their own, but mm. combining them um, really enhance their experience for the person using it, and then they get more out of out of the whole experience themselves. Um, uh, if we talk a little bit more just about the uh, the red light and other kind of the technologies that could also be included, I know there was a panel in Dubai at the recent show there where we talked about technology. Um, and just maybe some ideas on what people could look to include at their salt facilities um, from a technology point of view, whether either in the room or just outside it. I'm thinking um, just to, for some people who have just a salt room, um, maybe they have a small space next to it. What would be your top two picks, each of you, maybe to go into that that space to help them bring new people in and offer them a, a slightly different experience or a longer journey? Um, I think for me, it would be breath work and some visualization. Um, so really impacting, so you're breathing in that salt in a much mm -hmm. deeper way. Um, and then obviously going on a, a meditation journey. So if you could combine the two, Possibly adding, obviously, some form of um, music as well would be would be perfect. So, really, um, it would be an amazing experience. It's something that I'm creating in one of my projects that you might be helping me on. Actually. <laughs> <Brilliant>. <laughs> we know that. So, um, yeah, I, I think those would be uh, my top combinations. Breath, so breath really work has to be in yeah. there, definitely. Just elevating that experience rather than necessarily creating something else. Yes. Mm. Yeah. Because you're always going to have challenge with space. Yeah. Um, and, you know, space is becoming a premium in many locations, particularly in, in urban environments. So it's how can we use that space effectively? Um, so, yeah, again, to ensure that we have the return on investment. I'm seeing a lot of refurbishments at the moment as well. I'm sure Danny's probably having the same. So a lot of facilities that have had great spas for many years, but are now dated. Um, and it's a reallocation of space and how can we use them effect effectively. And that's where I find the layering of therapies even more powerful. Perfect. Thank yeah. you. Uh, Danny or Tammy? Um, for, for us, for me, I just, we want to incorporate halotherapy into the biohacking orb next. That's our next plan of action. And... At the moment, we would look at it going into a salt room, but we would like to incorporate it into the next uh, prototype. So Brilliant. we believe that by having the modalities that we've got in the biohacking orb and adding that, plus probably some near uh, red, then we'll create another mm -hmm. form of the biohacking orb. Excellent. But we Sorry, see I that form of technology, it's, it's... but absolutely breathing breath work and we I can't wait to try your orb Danny it's, it's on my top list as you know I put it in one of my um, or hopefully it will go into one of the facilities I've got in London um, but I'm so excited for you it's such a fantastic uh, piece of kit and can't wait to experience it myself and we'll drop the um, the link for the biohacking orb on here um, as well so that you can go and investigate it yourselves um, and then finally, Tammy, what would be your top two um, options or what would you like to add to something? When I get off here, Danielle gave me, gave me the best idea. We have IV therapy and we have the halo therapy, <laughs> but we never, I never consider combining them both together. And it, it makes sense. It's Why true. wouldn't yes. we do that? So I'm going to, that as soon as I get away from this call, I'm going over to see how we can add this because it's perfect. Um, and, you know, I think really with halo therapy, I mean, I think everybody agrees that um, whatever you do to add to that, whether it is IV therapies or to complement it, it's going to be amazing. If I use, like I said earlier, we have residents and locals that come in and do the halo therapy and then go get a massage 
or get a facial. I mean, Halo is great for the skin. The salt's great for the skin. I mean, there's so many benefits beyond respiratory, but um, I would say Halo therapy, the infrared, which we have, as well as the Prism Light Pod. I think that's a great combination. Number one, though, the IV therapy. <laughs> Brilliant. Well, that is fantastic. I hope um, everyone who's watched today uh, has taken something away from this. So I know there's been a lot of discussion there, some great ideas and some fantastic experience from you all. So thank you so much for joining today. And I Thanks, look forward Sarah. I look forward to seeing where the orb goes and some new projects popping up and seeing those IV drips at the Carillon. <laughs> <laughs> You've got to come to Miami. Oh, absolutely. It's on the list. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> Thank you all, ladies. And uh, we will now pop on to the next session. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks.